Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm planting a brand new flower bed that we've never planted before. We're right here, right kind of at the entrance of our property. And we are planting this spot right beneath this big mulberry tree. This was all here when we moved in, the concrete kind of raised bed area with this planting. I mean, this is all like soil down in here. The odd part was when we moved in, there was a drip tube in here, but it was like a phantom drip zone. We couldn't figure out where the water would come from. We tried everything. We tried turning on every valve we could find, every zone we could turn on, and nothing fed this bed. Um, so we don't know. At one time, somebody ran a drip zone to this area and had it planted, but we've never done it just because we didn't have a very easy way to water it. So this last spring, sorry, Russell, when we had the water system worked on, you know, for these containers here, uh, there was a faucet down the way, like maybe halfway down there. We had that one capped and then the water line trenched down to the end so that the faucet wasn't kind of like right in the middle of all these pots. It was on the end instead, which makes it look a little cleaner. So um, it tees off of this and we brought it over here and split it into four zones as well that we can control separately. So you can see all four zones. There's like a little control box down in here and we can control it all from our phones, which is really neat. Uh, we've done a video about that. We'll link that down below, kind of explaining how our system works. But this one right here feeds all the 14 pots, which are doing so fantastic. And then this one is still open right here. So if we want to take a line down like on the new property to feed trees, which we desperately need at this point because it's starting to get really hot, we can do that at some point. This one right here feeds the front estate planters, the two containers up front. And then this one right here was dug down. I think this concrete went down about four to six inches and it goes underneath the concrete and comes right up here. So now this little flower bed has its very own zone that we can run as much and as often as we want to or need to because this area is really interesting i feel like it's going to be a bit of a learning curve for me because morning sun comes in just for a little while on this side and you know morning sun isn't as intense and then throughout the rest of the day this huge tree canopy shades it for a lot of the day and then towards the end of the afternoon which we're getting to that time now it starts to get dappled in the front and then it gets some pretty hard sun right at the end of the day so what we're going to try out in this bed this year are caladiums and i don't have a ton of growing experience with caladiums i tried them for the very first time in my entire life last year but we got our hands on them kind of late in this season and they did really well but i don't feel like i got to test them to their full potential because i cut their growing season in half so this one's called white wonder look at this the cool thing about these caladiums is that these newer varieties can handle a lot more adversity in terms of light. Um, so, you know, traditional varieties want a shade to part shade location. And I've got a couple of varieties here that also want those type of light requirements, but these can take sun or shade. In fact, I've got another variety called Chinook that's really pretty. Look at this one. I'm going to be planting these somewhere else. I brought both of them out so that I could try them out, but I thought that the Chinook matched the color of the concrete a little bit too closely. I think the White Wonder will show up a lot better. Um, this is going to be, a, did I already say this is gonna be a learning curve? Because it is going to be. Uh, these plants are really suited for the south. They like high humidity, they like the heat. Uh, we get the heat, they like heat, high humidity, and moist soil. We can control the soil, like I said with the, the system, we can run it all the time to where the soil is always moist. It'll get the heat, but here it won't get the high humidity. They also don't like to be in an area where they get really cool nights. They like to be in temperatures above 65 degrees. And if they hit temps like right around 50, it'll start to scent them and they won't grow as quickly. They'll just kind of sit there for a while. And we have in June, we have a 42 degree night coming up, which is very atypical for us. But at some point, you know, you just have to decide I got to plant these things and get them in the ground. And I don't think it'll hurt them, but it probably will stunt them for a little while. And it's just going to be the way it's going to be this year. Um, like tomorrow, it's supposed to be 96, and then it's going to do a 39 degree temperature shift in one night. So I'm sure we're going to have a nice big storm. E either way, I think this is going to be really beautiful. I'm going to run the drip today. I'm going to do three lines of the, I've got it right here, the brown drip tubing that has holes every 18 inches. And I think doing three lines is a little overkill for most things in this size of space. I think two would be sufficient for most, but I want the coverage of water to be really good knowing that these like moist soil. Both of these varieties grow like 15 to 20 inches tall and eight to 10 inches wide. So you really can like, they'll get like this tall or so, um, but you really can, I think kind of plant them close-ish together if you want a really lush full appearance. I don't know how far mine are gonna go, 
So I think what we'll do first is run the drip system um, and we'll show you that whole process and then we will lay all these out and see what we've got going. Okay guys, quick recap of what I just did for the drip. This is where the access is. You can see the black poly that comes up here. I used a T-coupler here and took off from this one and went all the way around the outer circle of this raised bed and reconnected it here. Then I cut it, put another T in so that I could bring this section over here. And then I did the exact same thing. Used another T-coupler, went all the way around, connected again, and then I cut it here, did the same thing, and I ended it. So there's no point at which there's an ender on this drip tube. It all connects back to itself and we found that that just works the best for us in terms of flow and getting uh, even distribution. And then also, like I said, this is overkill I'm using three uh, rows of drip rather than just two, but I feel like the coverage is gonna be better. And because we're dealing with caladiums in particular, I really wanna do it right. And I wanna have evenly moist soil at all times. And I think we'll get it with this. So now I'm gonna lay out all the caladiums and we'll show you what we end up with. Depending on the amount that I have, I may end up leaving this front section and I'll come in maybe with lemon coral sedum and do a front plant. But if they'll all spread out evenly and look really good, I'd rather just have the caladiums in here. So let's do that real quick. So I ended up not having quite enough caladiums to fill it up as much as I wanted to. So I started with the back rows first and then was working my way forward and then realized that, you know what, I think a, a layer of lemon coral sedum will actually look really beautiful and it will kind of cap the whole display because the lemon coral, I mean, it beefs up and it will, I'm guessing it's gonna crawl across this and maybe kind of go down the sides a bit, which will look really pretty and it'll make the whole thing look really soft. Plus I think it adds a layer of bright brightness. Um, with the white of the caladium and the bright of the chartreuse, it's going to be a very cooling area and it'll show up really well, um, even though it's a shaded area most of the day. Um, now, I, I realize this is an insane amount of plants, but one, you can buy these caladiums as bulbs. You don't have to buy them as plants and you can save them from year to year. In fact, you might remember last year I saved a bunch of caladiums. So I've got a bunch of bulbs in here. In fact, when we're done planting this, we'll take them over and I'll show you how I'm gonna plant mine. I'm not gonna plant all of them today, but I'll show you how I plant them uh, in one area of our garden. So it you know, could be like an initial investment and then you know that later on, it, you know, it's a decent amount of work. Um, but if you enjoy gardening, you can lift them, save them, and then you can plant them from year to year. So it's one of those things that is just an investment up front in an area if you wanna deck it out this much. So anyway, I brought my auger up. I've got, I'm not going to put fertilizer in the holes of the caladiums. That's another thing about them. They don't like fertilizer like most other annuals. They like it about a quarter of the strength of your normal fertilizing rate. And so they just don't need very much. They were just fertilized last, this Monday. So just a few days ago. So I'm just gonna plant them as is, as I will do with the sedum as well. So it'll make planting a little bit quicker. And then they'll just be on our fertilizing schedule, but we'll only fertilize maybe every couple of weeks to every three weeks rather than every week along with the rest of our annuals. So let's plant. the ground and I'm not sure how it looks because the lighting is really dappled right now um, so I'm not sure how much detail you can see and I still do need to mulch but what I want to do before I mulch and kind of finish this whole area up and I'm hoping to get pictures of that in the end so you guys can see like in this video what it looks like 
Um, I want to water all of this in this evening and then I'm going to let it kind of dry out and then tomorrow I'll run the drip system. And before, so before I mulch, I can see the coverage of the drip system. That's always really important to leave it exposed for just a little while so that if you need to make any adjustments at that point, I can do it before I mulch so I don't mess my mulch up. Um, and the sedum is fairly adaptable to a whole bunch of different types of situations. I plant mine along with all my other annuals and it takes the same amount of water and it still performs really well. So even though the caladiums want really moist soil, I think the sedums will still be okay. Um, but that's just something we'll have to learn as we go. Um, now I was going to plant the caladium bulbs in another area of our yard, but this ended up taking a little bit longer than I thought. Honestly though, I've been using this auger right here. I've showed it to you in other videos. It makes my planting time about twice as fast, at least. So when I go through, like I have a process. I go through, I, I aug all the holes. I don't know if that's the proper term. I dig all the holes with the auger first. And then usually I go through and I'll do like a batch of six at a time. I'll take them all out of their containers, toss fertilizer in the hole, plant them all, move to the next batch and do it that way. And it goes really, really quick. But what I did over here so that I could at least just show you how to plant a caladium bulb is I dug a hole right here with the auger. And what you do, let me show you. This is how I stored them in shredded paper. And they were just in a closet, a dark closet upstairs. So this is what a caladium bulb looks like. Look at this. This is a really good example right here. They look like nothingness. Like they look like they could just be a piece of bark sitting here. Isn't that nuts? That they'll grow into something like this, but you can see a growth point right here. So that's what you want to have pointing up in the hole. And you want to plant these about two inches down. And I'm just gonna go ahead, and this is actually the same variety. So I'm just gonna leave it in the ground right here and we'll see what it does. So we'll go about two inches down, place our bulb right there at the bottom of the hole, and then backfill with soil. It's really, really easy to do. Um, so like I said, you don't have to start with plants. You can order bulbs or buy bulbs um, and start that way. And that does cut the cost down, um, but you do have to wait the benefit as always, it's kind of like starting from seed versus buying the plant. Um, when you buy the plant, you're a little ahead of the game because it's been forced and grown on earlier in a warmer environment, in a greenhouse environment, as opposed to when you put the bulb in the ground, you're just behind a little bit. Most of the time that doesn't matter. That will probably spring out of the ground and start growing really quickly now that it's warmer, except for our cold night that we have coming up <laughs> this weekend. Anyway, super excited to have this project done and to have something in this space because we've just been staring at it for several years now, and a lot of you guys have suggested, like, why don't you plant up that area? It's just like prime for planting, and we just didn't have water access. So this year is a great year. Anyway, I hope this video was fun to watch, to see this area kind of come alive a little bit, and we'll give you progress updates throughout the season to show you how these caladiums do. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.